Hello and welcome back to the Spotlight Games podcast for episode 120. Ooh, I love a round number. Today, we're talking about No Rest for the Wicked, Tales of Kinzera, Zao, Dave the Diver, and we're going to talk about sevens in video games. Are, is that a passing grade? Is it a failing grade? We're going to get into it. What does it really mean to gamers? I'm your host, Patrick. Joining me as always, my sweet dumpster boy, Cayman Darty Cayman. How you doing, buddy? Do you really gonna you will really want to ask that question, Patrick? Yeah, you know, you I felt, do feel I, weird. I do and I don't. Oh, I didn't how how why, why do I always do this, game? I mean, there's a good question. I always I never remember to change the go live message. Mm. People on their phones right now think I'm we're going live with no rest for the wicked. I mean, we're gonna talk about it, but because I did a little impromptu stream the other night. So now, and so I made the little message then. I didn't forget then, but I forgot. My, my favorite is when I see the message pop up at yeah. like 1030. And I'm like, what is Patrick up to right now? <laughs> what is he doing? What's this fucker doing? What, is he, what has he been getting into that he hasn't been telling me about? Well, all sorts of things, brother. Cayman, would you believe it? Mm. We saw each other in <laughs> real life. Fuck it, right? We did, man. First time for everything. I think it's the first time I've seen you in about seven and a half years. It it feels like it. I was actually I was talking to, to Sid about this, and um, she was like, "When when was the last time you saw Patrick in, per, in person? Because we see each other weekly like this. Correct. We also talk daily. Correct. So there's really not a moment that goes by that you're not like connected to me somehow. I was like, I think it's been a year, a close to it at least. It was when did you guys move to your house? In June, it was honestly, I think the last time we saw each other was my Halloween party before you moved. That there's a, a huge possibility that is indeed yeah. the case because, like you said, we t- we're talking on the podcast all the time, it feels like we see each other. Yeah, like when we saw each other, it wasn't like some grandiose occasion where it's like, yeah. Oh my god, I haven't seen you in forever. It was like it just so happened that if I wanted to touch you, I could, yeah, yeah. Which and did I? That's between you, me, and Lafonda. Oh, well, you know, Lafonda's got security cams, and they've <laughs> already reached out to my attorney. So, Cayman, we have a lot of video game stuff to talk about because this is the Spotlight Games podcast, where each week, 120 times now, we spotlight the latest and the greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Spotlight Games Pod, or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod. So be sure to follow us there so that you're notified when we go live so you can be part of the conversation. Also, if you're here live now today, mm. we're back tomorrow night. We, we took the whole week off yesterday. I mean, last week. We took the whole week off yesterday as well. Uh, but last week, we didn't do the podcast and we didn't do a Last of Us stream for reasons that we will not discuss today but we're back tomorrow and i'm excited we're making progress we we finally picked back up on the last of us part two two weeks ago uh seattle day one we're trudging along one of the longest days in the story so i feel like once we can say we're on uh, on a different day that'll feel like a big win but um roses on the sticks and i tell you what for those of you that didn't tune in last time Rose has been playing a lot of Pokemon Snap. Mm-hmm. Her fucking aiming and Twitch shooting has gotten really good. She wow. was pulling off some shit against the clickers last time. I was like, this is very impressive. Uh, so tune in next day. <laughs> tomorrow. Next day. I almost said next week, but it's not next week. 8 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod. And finally, join the Discord. If you're in the mm-hmm. Discord, you're notified every time we go live. If you're not following us on Twitch, which you should be doing. We have a fun little Discord where we discuss what we're playing and generally goof off together about video games. So if that sounds like something you'd like, click the link in the description. Click the link in the bios of our social. Join the Discord. Cayman. Mm-hmm. Two weeks have gone by since we last talked about video games publicly. Publicly. Mind you. And we've been playing some games. And it wouldn't be an episode of the Spotlight Games podcast if we didn't talk about what we've been playing. So let's just fucking do it, brother. Tell me, brother. What where have you been? You been? No, what have you? Well, you know what? I'll you, start off this week. Yeah, we can we can flip flop it. Let's flip flop it. Let's, let's flip. flip. Let's flop. Uh, I've been beat bopping around. I tell you what, came in. I'm going to yeah. start off with my report by saying I, and I don't mean to be vulgar, 
Mm-hmm. Okay. I am so Fallout horny right now. Yeah. I finished the show. Yeah. And I just want to play Fallout. I'm I downloaded Fallout Shelter on my phone. Mm. Okay. Been Fallout playing Shelter. Fuck ton of Fallout Shelter. I used to play Fallout Shelter back in the day. Yeah. I, I wonder if I tried to boot it up now, if I would like get everything I had before, because yeah. I was like maxed out everything. Like, yeah. It was great. Yeah. I know so much has changed, but yeah, what a fun little game. Yeah, I, I played it so much back in the day, and mine did not carry over. When I downloaded it, it was a brand new vault. Mm. Uh, I had to give it a whole new number, started from scratch. But I'm glad that that is the case, because it's been fun rebuilding it i've not quite maxed out everything but i'm pretty fucking close after playing it mm-hmm. kind of non this is actually the first time since the launch of marvel snap that i have gone consecutive days not playing marvel snap holy shit because i'm just playing fallout shelter i got fucking missions to go on they added fallout tv show content to fallout shelter you got lucy you got the ghoul you got maximus you got ma grandma june whatever her name was you got some characters you got the dog you got the snake salesman these are characters from the show. Mm-hmm. They're in the vault now. All sorts of stuff. Having a great time. And then I've been be bopping around in Fallout New Vegas. I, I think I maybe mentioned it last time we met that I was playing Fallout New Vegas. Mm-hmm. But I've been playing more. I've probably put in five, six, seven hours in Fallout sure, New Vegas. Sure. I want to get back. But it's to the point now, Cayman, mm-hmm. where I'm like, am I about to try out Fallout 76? That's a dangerous road to go down. It's a, it's a dangerous road to go down because that game famously has not been very liked. Here's the thing. Famously not been very liked. However, uh, I've heard that that's changed. I've heard that it's better. I have heard it's a lot better than it was for the first like three years it was out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's it's still a survival game, Mm -hmm. which we've talked about on the show. Not a huge fan. So I might, maybe next week I'll talk about Fallout 76. Maybe not. But the two games I think you want to hear about and our audience wants to hear out are actually new came in. Sure. And that is No Rest for the Wicked, Early Access, and Tales of Kinzera Zao. Let me pose the question to you, Cayman. Which would you like to hear about first? I want to go with Tales of Kinzera. Okay. First. That's good because I've played it less. So I have okay. less to say. Fantastic. Um, at this point, I have put roughly, mm-hmm. roughly, mm-hmm. let's say three and a half hours into Tales okay. of Kinzera Zao. I've, I've like passed the first boss. Uh, if you don't know Tales of Kinzera Zao, it is a Metroidvania game. It is the first game from a studio whose name escapes me right now, but um, actor uh, Abu Bakr Salim was like, I want to make video games. I've been in things like uh, the Game of Thrones spinoff show, uh, Raised by Wolves. I was Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins. I have this illustrious career as an actor. I want to make a game. Mm-hmm. And so he did, and uh, which is very cool. It's uh, it's like very um, African, like a lot of themes, uh, not themes, I mean themes, but... Uh, like art style wise and like setting wise it, it's it's giving like an african setting which is cool i don't remember off the top of my head if they've said it's like in a specific place maybe no zao is the character maybe kinzara is the place i don't know that's one of my problems is like the, so far mm-hmm. it's not grabbed me enough that i like sure care about what's happening it for me so far it's just a pretty game to look at yeah uh yeah. I like a Metroidvania. It's not my favorite genre. In fact, I don't like playing them a lot in um, succession because I can get kind of tired of of Mm -hmm. the genre. Sure, Um, sure, sure. And I don't know that I'm going to finish Tales of Kinzera Zao because from what I've read, from what I've heard, from what I've listened to in, in other podcasts, reviews, and YouTube reviews, Prince of Persia seems to be the Metroidvania of the year at this point. And if I'm only going to maybe play one full one in, in a year, or at least for the next several months, I would rather it be the one that seems to be a lot more universally liked. Because the truth is, there's a lot of issues that I have with Tales of Kinzera Zhao. Uh, the combat isn't particularly fun to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, friend of the show, Cognitive Clips, was talking in the Discord about like there's a lot of um, combat encounters that can be super frustrating i came across my first one today where it, there's this like weird shield mechanic that just like makes it kind of like really frustrating to play where like you have to you'll have like five or six enemies happening and each not each of them but like multiples will have like different certain things you have to do to break down their shield and you just don't have a lot of health in the game so it's like mm-hmm. it, it's punishing but not in a rewarding way it just sure, feels like it's sure. punishing um and 
so yeah, I don't know. I think the voice acting is great. I think the writing, when I'm paying attention to it, seems to be great. But there's just something about it that hasn't hooked me from a story perspective. Um, which, yeah, there's just, you know, there's so much to, to play right now. I still got to finish Rebirth. Like I said, I'm Fallout horny. Like, I just don't know that I'm going to stick around with Zhao. All that being said, though, I want to see more from the studio. It's like, I. I think it's that kind of thing. Like we've seen it before, especially in the last several years of like games first studios, first game, not a game's first studio studios, first game hits on certain levels, but just misses the mark on others. Give them that second shot. I want to see what can tales of consider as out two looks like. Sure. Because sure. if it's already as good as it is now, which it sounds like it's shitty, maybe by, by what I'm saying, it's not, it's just kind of mid. It's kind of like, it, honestly, this would have been a great segue into the topic of the show, which is going to be talking about like sevens. Like this is like that kind of like, it's a good game. Yeah. But there's, it leaves a lot to be desired. Sure. Um, remind me, I feel like I should know this and I think I know the answer. You're not really a Metroidvania guy, right? No, I look, I grew up with like Metroidvania games. I mean, shit, I played Castlevania Symphony of Night and, yeah. and Metroid. When I, I mean, Metroid Prime on my, on my Game Boy was like a big deal to me. Yeah, or Super Metroid. I think it was Super Metroid on Game Boy. Either way, yes. Uh, but I kind of know. I kind of grew out of them. Yeah, they don't really hit the same mark for me. I tend to get tired of them sooner rather than later. Sure. Um, nah, you know, it is one of those things. But it is interesting you to bring that point up because the game I've been playing, Patrick Dave the Diver, is kind of has some metroidvania esque it does um like things about it like gameplay mechanic so uh, dave the viver dave the diver came out last year it is a side scrolling some people call it a cozy game i think that's a lie i don't think that this it's is misleading a cozy for game. Sure. it is very misleading there are cozy game elements yeah and there are elements that are are, are a combat focused right and uh, the whole point of the game, and, and if you you missed Patrick talking at ad nauseum about this earlier in the last year, probably sometime last year when the game came out, it's now on PlayStation Plus. Um, but uh, the basically, you go down, you hunt fish, you then sell fish at the sushi store at night. It's a very simple concept. There's a story with a lot of uh, side content that you can do, and I think early on in the game, like I was really into it. Yeah. Like legitimately enjoyed my time. I enjoyed the fishing mechanic. I enjoyed getting new power, not power ups, but like new uh, tools, like gloves that can, you can pick things up and move things with, or, uh, you know, upgrading certain things or like upgrading your suit so you can dive deeper or upgrading your oxygen so that you can last longer, things like that. I really enjoy the way that they implement slowly, but surely incorporating new mechanics into the game. I think is really, really clever. I absolutely fucking despise the combat in Dave the Diver. <laughs> yeah, and when you say combat, you're specifically meaning like there are kind of scripted fight sequences. Yes, you there don't are. You mean the fishing aspect. Yeah. yeah. If this game was just fishing and running a sushi store like a, and then like doing like restaurant management and then like fish hunting, it would totally be fine. Um, it is one of the big things that you do in the game because you're trying to progress the story there are scripted boss sequences that you can definitely tell either were added on very late in, in the development or they were brought on early in development and then were just kind of left there and didn't really get a ton of Q&A. I don't really know. It's one, this game's not designed for boss fights. That's, I think, the first thing. Sure. It's not designed to have a boss fight mechanic. I think the other thing about it is like, it's it's just it's the worst part of the game i would agree with that for sure it, it I, was the boss fights were my least favorite part of the game too there was never a boss fight that i walked away from like man that fucking elevated this experience brother yeah. it's like certain things there's like a boss fight where you, they introduce a mechanic where like oh if you got a baseball bat you can hit rockets back at the enemy yeah and it's like cool but the problem is you have to be incredibly precise. And then the game at a certain point even tells you like, oh, 
these the rockets will slow down that's when i hit the rockets is now you i should be hitting them when they <laughs> slow down the truth is that's actually the worst way to do it you should just stand in front of the boss and let him throw the rockets at you and just whack them back immediately sure. it's the only way you should do it because you like the accuracy of hitting it it was so horrible and the game wants you to do that and it doesn't make sense there's other instances where like you'll fight these like large enemies like these massive beasts in the water and there's so little iframes like half a second of iframes that like if you get hit you're just immediately hit again and then because the enemy's so big and it, like its hitbox is just the entire thing that like you'll just immediately die yeah and you'll just like, keep getting hit like wow i don't i don't know how this made it through q a like i don't know what the fuck is going on here but like and it really soured the mood to the point that like i rolled credits and was like i'm at like 70 percent of the trophies here yeah i'm like i don't i want to platinum the game but i'm kind of just annoyed sure and there's also and not that like there's any bosses left. I think I have like two bosses left in the entire game. Uh, but there's just some other like the platinum itself. It's just very grindy to get the platinum. And I'm like, man, like. I just don't really necessarily feel like I want to just have to do 40 straight days of just fish, grab fish, go up and then sure try to level up dishes to a certain thing to try to get money to then only to do to get a platinum. It seems like a waste. I don't know. I think this game in a certain, when I started playing it, I think this game was like a solid four out of five for me. I think it's now down to like a solid three out of five. Wow. Okay. It's, it just, I think as the game went on, it just started to wear me down. Yeah. Well, cause you had also said in the discord, plug for the discord if you're not in the, in the discord when you first shared your initial thoughts you weren't that big on the sushi restaurant part of the game either correct yeah yeah well and that's the thing the thing is is like as you start to unlock more dishes that you can serve and you get more uh more fish and whatnot that you can serve it's like a real like i don't know i started to really enjoy it oh good i'm glad because was it was like, that was one of my favorite parts yeah that. Because to the point that I was like, I would rather just avoid anything story related and just go hunt fish and then sell them at night and yeah. like unlock new dishes and try new combos out and stuff. And I feel like that part's really fun. Uh, but like you said with Tales of Zara, this is like another great example of a game that like tried something that in this case, quite ambitious for what it was. Yeah. And incorporating a lot of different elements to the point that like, I think going forward into you know dave the diver 2 which they kind of set up like that there's going to be something there's something going on so you think there's gonna be a sequel when you beat the game that like a dave the diver 2 i think they if they can refine the boss mechanics and refine some of those other mechanics like i think there's a really great game here yeah just right now this version of the game it's not for me. That makes sense. I also feel like something that I don't think I ever talked about, but as I kind of sat with it more, mm -hmm. a bit of some pacing issues in Dave. There Diver, is where like you get to not to, you know, blatantly spoil big parts of the game, but like there's a part, there's a portion in which you get to kind of like a bigger area underneath the water uh, with a lot to do in that area is how I'll say it, not to, to necessarily spoil. And I feel like the game in a lot of ways really slowed down when you get there to a point where I, I started, like there were like quests that you'll get and things you have to do. And it's like, man, this is kind of getting a bit old for me. This section. hundred yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's a thousand that. Yeah, that's it does. And yeah, like I said, there's just things that, that I wish were different. I might pick up dredge next. Okay. I've heard good things about Dredge and I've heard it's similar enough, but like I might see how it is because there's Dredge DLC in Dave the Diver that is fun, but I've only encountered it once. Okay. So I don't know. But uh, Patrick, you have been playing No Rest for the Wicked. I know this is a hot topic right yes. now because it's also on your fantasy critic right now. Yes. And there are no scores for it right now. Patrick, yes. tell me why. Yes. Yeah, so I, I can't necessarily tell you why. And before I jump into my thoughts on No Rest for the Wicked, I do want to shout out a couple things. Yes. In the chat, we got Cognitive Clips, friend of the show, the aforementioned resubscribing for his fourth month. He says, four months of pure bliss, to which Rabbit128 said, <laughs> Cognitive Clips, you misspelled piss, <laughs> which really made me laugh. Uh, very good job, uh, both of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and listening. 
Uh, and then Rabbit128, you're catching some strays, Dumpster Boy. He says, maybe you should play a real Metroidvania like Ori, Jedi, or Hollow Knight. Well, I mean, let's let's be clear. He played the fucking rails off Jedi, but yeah. not an Ori or Hollow Knight guy. But let's just, you know, let's respect what we've talked about on this show, John. Um, but yeah, speaking of Moon Studio, this is a new entry from Moon Studio, the, the uh, studio that made Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisps. Um, was it one wisp or two wisp, Johns? Tell me, tell me. Uh, no rest of the wicked, though. Very different game than Ori. It's an action RPG. Um, it has very, 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 very light metroidvania elements at times mm -hmm. um but it's more so from an exploration standpoint it's it's not like oh here's a tool that i can now go use in an area it's more like i see this gate here and i bet i'll be able to come back to it and open it later it's like that's kind of the only kind of metroidvania connection thank you there's so like a ways. like a souls like a souls born style yeah which this game you can tell in so many ways is is really inspired by the Soulsborne genre, specifically with its combat, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people are having issue with. Uh, which, so yeah, so let me let me kind of back it up a little bit. So the game, as you mentioned, on my Fantasy Critic League, no reviews yet, even though it's in early access. A kind of thing that I'm I'm confused by, specifically from the Fantasy Critic perspective, because like I see some reviews online, but I guess there just aren't enough reviews for it to actually populate a score. But it's interesting because right now it's sitting on average from what I've seen around a seven in mm -hmm. its in its reviews, um, which is going to be a whole topic we discuss here in a bit. But I find it so fascinating because I read the reviews and so much of what I read is just not the experience I'm having. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are taking issue with performance in this game. Sure. They're taking sure. issue with, with frame rate drops. They're taking issue with uh, just like general it not running well. I've played about nine, 10 hours of this game so far, and I've really not encountered a single performance issue, which I'm very thankful for the most kind of the biggest issue in quotes that I've had. Uh, it, it makes my PC sound like a fucking Delta jet. Like it, it's, it's screaming, which is kind of shocking because this, I spent an embarrassing amount of money on this PC only Jacob Askren knows because he was there buying it with me. It's like, how is this game doing this to my PC? I feel like it's just the way that they, it has some under the hood issues. I think sure. that needs to be yeah. kind of sorted out. And there was a patch that they just dropped a few days ago that said like they were trying to address this. I haven't played it since then, so I don't know if it fixed it. Um, but here's a lot of preamble came in. Yes. I think No Rest for the Wicked could be an incredibly special video game. Okay. And I think what's missing at the moment is just, it's not complete. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, like, there's, to my understanding, I haven't gotten to this point, but to my understanding, there is a lot more content coming. They have an entirely planned, like, multiplayer section of the game uh, supposedly coming, which I don't love. Which I think also explains one of my biggest issues with the game is I can't fucking pause it. That's so fucking stupid, man. I guess it's like, well, if you're gonna be, if this is gonna be a shared world, then we can't let you pause it because it's multiplayer. But it's like it's not. I'm playing single player. Let me fucking pause the game. Yeah. But I feel like this game for me is like the perfect Soulsborne experience. And what I mean by that is it's tough, but it's not punishing. Mm -hmm. There are multiple, like any kind of action RPG, there are multiple uh, play styles. There are, like, not necessarily classes, but you can have, like, a, a claymore as your weapon, which is going to be really big and slow, but really powerful. You can have dual blades. You can have uh, a wand. You can have, like, sword and shield. Like, all sorts of, like, all of the basic kind of things. And each of those different... Um, weapon combinations will really drastically play like how or change how your character feels um because like a soulsborne game it's very big on the parrying and the rolling and the reason that i think that this is the perfect combination for me is that in the soulsborne games that i've played the rolling function i've never really been able to make it work the way that i'm getting to make it work here where in which it makes the game feel a lot faster 
Mm-hmm. I feel like with Soulsborne games, the rolling is more so like if you just if you're really bad at parrying, try rolling. And but I feel like with this game, yes. with, like I'm I'm still really bad at parrying, and I, I I've tried a lot of ways to parry in this game, but I can't figure out the timing. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I had a lot of fun in Dragon's Dogma with the dual blades fast build. I'm gonna do that here as well. So I can't parry because I have two blades. But I'm rolling like a motherfucker. And I've found that for me, Jordan, friend of the show, didn't have this experience uh, when he played. uh, But I can only speak to my own experience. The rolling, I feel like, is working so well for me that the combat is so fucking fun. Mm -hmm. And when you die, you're not losing all your shit. You're not losing loot. You're not losing money. Sometimes you lose, like, durability of weapons. But so I feel like, you know, when I'm against these these powerful bosses and I take a chance, I I swing and I miss. I'm not fucking so frustrated because I lost now, like, you know, the stakes are so high that like if I get hit again or die again, I'm going to lose everything. And, you know, there's a give and take with that, like this game, because it's not as punishing, doesn't have that Soulsborne moment that we all not we all a lot of people have experienced in love of that like you finally beat the thing and it's like you could break a redwood in half you're so excited game doesn't have that feeling because you're like it's not punishing it's just tough like there's mm-hmm. there's not that of the bosses that i've encountered i've never really needed more than a second try so like there's not that which i'm fine with like in fact i prefer yeah. because losing is not very fun that is that's very interesting that you like it's very interesting to me how this this works because as someone who famously hates souls games and who famously hated elden ring so much that he platinumed it um me that's me i'm the guy who did that That i'm the guy who hates himself that much um that i did recognize while playing elden ring especially the first time where i went pantsless and beat (laughs) margot that I was like, wow, this, so now I understand like, this is what souls people get excited about. Yeah. So it is interesting that you have like the, the souls mechanics, but without the punishing aspect of it, I wonder how that lands with people that like, like, does this, is it going to, uh, my question is like, it would probably work for me as it is for you, but yeah. like do souls people, the people that pride yeah. themselves so much on this, like, do they lose interest in something that's not well, I don't think so, I bet, because mm-hmm. of the different play styles, of the, like, if you really love that that feel of the parry, you have a few different, like, play styles to do that. And, I'm, I, and I assume if you are always playing the Souls games and you're, you, you, know, you beat them all, you love them all, you're probably a lot better at parrying than I am. Your timing is probably a lot better. And I will say the few times that I got the parry to work, like, it feels great. Like, it's... It, I understand why if I could be good at parrying, Mm -hmm. that would be a really satisfying game mechanic. That just like the simple feeling of something tries to hit you and you're like, no, fuck you. I'm going to get you back instead. Like a really nice feeling. Just like it's like an easy. uh, What's the uh, uh, fuck? I can't find the word, but like it's a, a quick like, ooh, that feels good. Like. And so the game can have that. It's not having it for me because I'm going the roll route. But I think um, something else that you had kind of touched on based on what I had said that this game, I think, will work for Souls people is the exploration bit. Mm. Is the, like, this game, man, it's pretty to look at. And and it's, the world itself is very uh, vertical and mm. wide. Uh, yeah. hor- I guess Horizontal, I guess, would be the better way to finish that phrase. Of... Um, you know, you'll be going through this sec, this section. You're in this like dungeon or whatever, and the the camera view is like a uh, like a two point five D almost. Like you're, it's like isometric. You're looking at it down from an angle, but it's really cool. Where and I don't know that I'll be able to explain this like well and and kind of give you a clear visual. I didn't prep any B roll, but like as you're moving through the space closer to you in the screen there will be like if there's like a wall of a thing it'll like kind of like slowly it'll like start to disappear for you so that you can see so it's like there's this cool like 
as you're moving through certain spaces, this like slow revealing of things where exploration will uh, kind of feel like you're going to want to kind of explore more because the more you explore, the more the camera will kind of like show you more stuff, which like sound, like when you say it sounds stupid, like, of course, it's a video game. But visually, the way they do it is really satisfying. Yeah. And they something that this game has that I feel like a Souls game doesn't typically have in my experience is like the climbing system. It's not like Breath of the Wild. You can't just like climb anything. But usually like if you see something that looks like you can get to it, you probably can get to it. You just got to figure out how. Whether it's you cut down a tree to like walk across the tree, whether it's like things that you can jump to and around, but just the way that they kind of visually show you, it's very much a puzzle, which I like that it's like, mm -hmm. it, it's not, you got to kind of work to, to get these like pieces of loot and stuff. Um, but with that also comes one of some of the bigger issues that I've been having. I said that I wasn't having performance issues, which is true, but I have been having some, um, I wouldn't even necessarily call them bugs, but things that are that like I am unclear on is this a bug or is this a design decision? Mm. And one of those is with exploration, it does the classic like fog of war map where yeah. as you go through, like it'll you'll reveal parts of the map, like in your mini map. Um, but like it keeps resetting. And I don't know if that's purposeful or a bug. And the reason that I can't decide is because also within those areas like i'll open a chest and then the map resets and i can reopen the chest so i'm like is this a design decision or is this a bug and you're like like because it's a work in progress like things just keep resetting for whatever reason and I'm, i've noticed there have been a few issues like that where i'm like because it's unclear to me whether it's on purpose or not it's kind of frustrating sure. where like there's yeah. this like there's like a bounty system once you get to like the main city at least so far maybe there's multiple main cities but um there's like you know really simple stuff like go go find five pieces of ore go find go kill like s little things or like go kill 15 rats whatever and i'll start on the bounty and then i'll come back my next session and like the bounties like it's as if i never started the bounty it's like okay that's that's probably a bug that's probably like john in the chat saying this sounds like early access bugs and they very well could be, but it's frustrating that I don't know. And so like there are certain, certainly there are yeah. aspects of the game that it's not like I'm having like a, a grand old time with it. Like there, are, I can tell this is an early access and, and that's a bummer. And it makes me wonder like, you know, to circle back to what I was saying earlier, like th I think there, this game could be very special. I can't help but wonder if we had waited. Mm -hmm. for a full release yeah you work all these kinks out could this be a game of the year contender because for me it just doesn't feel like where it's at now by the end of the year even if we get a full release i just don't think that this could be part of the conversation but i think it could have been so yeah so that brings up a good point to me like does this one makes me curious did this need to even release as early access I don't know. Like, it's a good question. I feel my gut tells me no. But then you listen to the developers on Twitter, like the game director, be like, this is why we did it. And like, you know, the cases he's making are sound. And, and he's like, you know, it, his kind of whole thinking was, from what I remember, I'm paraphrasing a lot, but it was like, if we have the ability to do this and get feedback directly from the source and make this game better alongside you, why wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. To which I say, well, if you can, you know, with through QA and through testing, kind of get to the similar kinds of things, I would personally, as the as the player, rather play the finished version. Yeah, and that's and that's where my I think the second part of me comes in, where it's like it feels, I don't know, it feels like you do a disservice to a a, a game when you release it in a state in which you might sour the opinions of the people who would have played it at launch. And those yeah. people might not play it at launch now. Yeah. Cause then also I'm very new to early access, but it seems like it's a pretty common thing in early access that like, I might lose all my progress. Yes. And I'll yeah. tell you what, if I lose all my progress, I'm not touching this game again, Yeah, which is a bummer because I am having so much fun playing it. It's, sure. it's even though I've said multiple times in this episode, I'm fallout horny. No rest for the wicked is the thing that's getting me on my PC because I want to keep playing this game. But 
as excited as I've been for Hades 2, I don't know that I want to play it in early access because this was a game that I was so excited uh, to play, No Rest of the Wicked, and I'm having a great time. If I were to put a score on my on just like just so far, not like a final score in the game, but like I would say this is like solid four out of five with potential to be like four and a half out of five material. It's a, a great like what I've played so far has been great. But because I don't expect to get like the full version anytime soon, and there's like all sorts of content story-wise and everything still like down the, the road, by the time that all hits, I'll be gone, I'll be done with this game. Like yeah. I, I don't know that I will ever see the finish the finished product of this game. And that is disappointing. Having played what I've played so far. I wish sure. I just waited, essentially. Yeah. No, that's a bummer. That's a bummer to hear. And I know that there's a lot of reasons people do like devs do early access. A lot of time is to try to drive additional revenue and things like that to yeah. like be able to finish the game. Um, it is disheartening to see a situation like this because it might prevent games that could actually benefit from early access getting hands on them. So sure. That's a, that's a bit of a bummer. This, this yeah. seems like a, a lose lose from what I can tell. It seems like it to me too. And like, I'm going to keep playing it and I hope that, by the end of the year, I'm like, this is an easy top five for me. Because I mean, right now, like it, I would say that this is, it's in my top experiences for the year, but just knowing that it's unfinished and knowing what's to come the rest of the year, I don't expect this to stay in, sure. in my top. Absolutely. It's just a matter of like, there just hasn't been a ton of games that have really gotten right. me going. So like much. stalker two will later this year when it drops September 25th. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, Bennett UA in the chat says we're all fallout horny. <laughs> Ain't we brother? Ain't we? Uh, but yeah, so that's my my experience on No Rest for the Wicked so far. Um, I will say one last thing. Um, if you haven't seen this game in action, go watch some YouTube videos or go watch my stream that I did last week. It's in the Twitch file. I didn't put it on YouTube. But this game, it's like breathtaking how how gorgeous this game is. Like the, the art style of this game is fucking nuts. And I... I hope, you know, for the Johns in the chat, like, I think by the time you get the finished version of this game, you're going to be thrilled. Uh, so based on what I've said, if you still want to play it, go for it. If not, wait until it's done and maybe you'll have a little bit of a better time. Um, Cayman, that's what we've been playing. Yeah, it is indeed, Patrick. That is what we've been playing. You know what? I think it's time, Patrick, we talk about something else. I think so, too. I think we've been doing this long enough. Patrick, what if I were to ask you the question? Yeah. Are sevens actually good? Or are sevens a pass or fail? That's probably a better. I probably should have went with that since it's on the placard. I mean, that um, is the wording you chose pre-show. So, Patrick, we've we've had a lot of discussion about this. This is yeah. something that we've even talked about on the show before, and I'm very passionate about the subject. If you can't tell from the tenor of my voice, the inflection <laughs> I'm delivering everything, in, or the fact that cracked open a cold one for there it me. is Whoa. sevens seven seven sevens we look at sevens on the game scale out of a 10 right and we see a seven and it feels like lately patrick that there have been games that have dropped with an eight and people are like this fucking blows mm -hmm. and just get it the fuck out of here so we've had some conversations and plugged Discord again, but this happened, I think, happened over Discord. We talked about this idea that, like, our seven's actually bad. And there has been a, there was, I wish I had the tweet pulled up, but there was actually a really, um, like, a really poignant tweet that I read where it was like, we can blame the American, uh, America's education system on the fact that we look at sevens as being bad. Uh, the reason that is, is because in most, I would say schools at this point, even in colleges, to some degree, a seven would be a 70, which is barely passing. Um, if you got a 70 in something, my mom would beat my ass if I got a 70 in anything that I did. Right. And so for games to come out and release at a seven out of 10 or a 70%, like that is a not good score. One might say, but in truth, a five is technically considered average and sure. a seven would be considered good. So why did we get here? How do we process this, Patrick, this new revelation of information, this new world we live in where it is just feels so hard 
to 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 kind of work around this but like it's so interesting to me because mm-hmm. it, and I don't have all the answers. In fact, I probably don't have any answers. But this idea that a game of the year contender can only be like a 9 or a 10 and that right. if a game is lower than an 8, sometimes even an 8 out of 10, that it's a disappointment. Sure. Is a bit ludicrous for sure. But I think I think a lot of it comes from a volume issue. And what I mean by that is there are so many games today that the average video game player might only play five games a year or six games a year or whatever. So then when, when you look at the sheer amount of games that are coming out and how like if you look at, at IGN as an example, they'll give probably five or six games that actually might be a little high like in like a 10 but maybe maybe i could be a little more accurate by saying they they'll give more than 10 games a nine or a 10 over the course of a year and so then if if you think about okay well maybe the average game gamer only plays a few games a year mm-hmm. ideally you want all of your experiences to be amazing you want your hard earned dollars to go toward like the best experiences that there can be. And because there are so many experiences these days, I think people get a little bit out of shape when they see how many good games there are. And then there's a game that they're excited about that doesn't hit that mark. And then all of a sudden it's like the world ended. Patrick, let me pause it to you. Yeah. A world in which sevens are actually saving the video game industry one seven at a time. Tell me. So this year we've had so far two, I think two, probably two, maybe even three distinct titles that have cracked that that nine out of ten category. Yeah, uh, fine. They're all in my fantasy critic too. Um, <laughs> that would be Yakuza Infinite Wealth. That would be uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, as well as Dragon's Dogma Two. While those games, I've played two of the three and loved the two of the, that I've played and, and can definitely see why those games are nine pluses. Um, it, to me, we need to have sevens and we need to have a lot of sevens. There's nothing wrong with a seven. Uh, but at the same time, a world without sevens, what is God of War? Sure. What is Red Dead Redemption 2 if we don't have... Uh, let's see a uh, no rest for the wicked a tale. how could you tell me that we look at that prince of persia the lost crown as such a monumental feat in game design if we don't have a tales of kinzara to compare it to sure that's a great point a nine out of ten means absolutely nothing if everything is a nine out of ten correct now the problem is is if every single game turns into a seven then we run into the issue of the DC Marvel War. This is something that, that sure. Cogner Cooks and I have talked about uh, ad nauseum about this, was that essentially Marvel was making 10 out of 10s every single movie. The reason being was because they were trying to beat their biggest competitor, DC. And all DC could do was release fucking stinker. <laughs> like four stinker. out of 10s. Stinker after stinker after stinker. To the point that Marvel realizes as it's going through this, like, why would we waste energy to put out a 10 out of 10 when if we just put out like a seven, everyone else is putting out fours. So the competition still needs to be there. And and I think the good thing about a seven and why I think we can kind of probably draw the line at a seven is that a seven is still a game that there's enjoyment with. Sure. A game that you're going to be able to have. Some of my favorite games are sevens. And shockingly enough, Bulletstorm was an eight. Shockingly enough, Bulletstorm, yeah. It's a Metacritic is like an 84 or something. Shockingly enough, only one point south of King, the original Kingdom Hearts and two points north of Kingdom Hearts 3. Wow. So if you combine the two, technically Bulletstorm is better than Kingdom Hearts. I mean, so look, I've been championing an eight this whole time, but <laughs> there are some notable sevens, Patrick. Yeah. That like we can probably reference to kind of acknowledge well, some crazy games that we love that maybe weren't. 
Yeah, one of the reasons this came up, one of the reasons this came up is that Stellar Blade recently that came Mm -hmm. out, there's been so much shit about Stellar Blade in terms of discourse with a capital D, but it got from most places. Capital double D, baby. Yeah, that's that's fucking true. Um, So so I I pulled from IGN, just from the one source, because I figured it'd be easier if I'm just pulling from one website, notable seven out of tens recently good and bad in terms of like, well, some of these names you might, that might surprise you. Some of these games, like actually that surprises me even the other way. Like I, I'm surprised it even made it to seven. Like bullet storm being an eight. Shocking. I know. Um, well, so actually to, to jump ahead in the list, uh, after a certain point, I Jen, I went back 10 years actually, and I didn't grab every single seven, but I grabbed the ones that like jumped out to me uh, on their website. And there's a point in which they go to a hundred point scale. So 7.2, 7.7, like all those. And they gave uh, a bullet storm full clip edition popped up and that got a 7.8 from them, which I was, but uh, so most recently stellar blade, the early access of no rest for the wicked uh, tales of Kinzara Zhao, princess peach showtime, uh banishers ghosts of new eden avatar frontiers of pandora basically every sports game seems to get a seven these days Uh, nhl the new top spin game tennis is back uh, ed 2k ea fc 24 starfield with the seven out of ten it's true uh stray gods the role-playing musical the new expanse from telltale dead island 2 callisto protocol sonic frontiers power wash simulator already some of these from a you know Everyone's scale is different. Everyone has their own opinion about the games that they've played. But some of these feel like a seven leaning far closer to a nine. And some of these feel like a seven leaning far closer to a five. Callisto uh, Protocol. Callisto Protocol being that one. A four. I would say Power Maybe. Wash being one that a leans nine. up. Yeah. I would say uh, of this list, I haven't played it myself, but I've heard nothing but great things about Banishers Ghosts of New Eden. Like I've heard a lot of really good stuff about, uh, about sure. Banishers. I go back even further, Pokemon Legends Arceus. I had a 10 out of 10 experience with Pokemon Legends Arceus, but to call it a seven, I think is is totally fair. Like, I think that there was a lot of problems with that game performance-wise. Uh, there was a lot to be desired in terms of story, that kind of thing. Um, going back even further, Uncharted Lost Legacy got a 7.5. So this was back in their 100-point the scale. So that's... It, it's okay, like, so, yeah. This is a it's a perfect example when we look at this right to be like, yes, a seven is completely arbitrary when you compare it to everything else. I think a great example is Starfield, where I think Starfield to me is a perfect seven. Yeah. Like, I don't have any question about that. That is a perfect seven out of ten game for me. Yeah. But I've also I know people who put way more time into it actually beat the game. You Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one of them would probably give it an eight. I would definitely lean more toward an eight than a seven. It's one of those games where like the further I get from it, which seems to happen a lot for me, but the further I get from it, like the less high I am on it. But I would, I would probably uh, rate that more like a 3.5 out of five. So clo- certainly closer to four for sure. Um, so it's, yeah, so it's, it's, it's crazy, but I think like, I think it's good for us to take a moment to step back. And I think this is the other important thing is like, you can't sleep on sevens. I remember uh dragon eight or like a, uh, sorry, Yakuza like a dragon. Uh, yeah. Also on my list, got a seven out of 10 from IGN. Got a seven out of 10 from IGN. That was my game of the year that year. Yeah. And so I do think, I think that we can be overly critical. Uh, and I think a lot of this, I hate to even admit, say this out loud. I think a lot of it comes down to the console war. Sure. I think that you mix in the fact that a 70 is a is essentially a barely passed. Yeah. Which sucks to say. But I think the other side, too, is that we have a tendency to try to pit games and root for games to fail so that we yeah. can look at our, our console counterpart and say, ha, 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 look at you. Starfield is a 7. God of War is a 10. Mm-hmm. Where... Or we look in a situation like what's happening right now where all these people are like, ha, 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 Sony, uh, Rise of the Ronin is a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Rise of the Ronin is selling better than both Neos. So something positive is happening, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think it is. I think we come down to it. Uh, I've got a couple, Patrick, if you don't mind. Some weird ones that popped up on my list that blew my mind. First, this is actually coming into it technically what would be a 6.7 okay 
if we're rounding up. If you're yeah, we're rounding up to a seven out of ten. The remake to Medieval. Oh wow. Which I actually really enjoyed that game. I never played that one. I didn't realize that it scored so poorly, but that's another like that the original Ghost and Goblins got a oh, sure. 6.9 out of 10, 69 on Metacritic. Here's one that absolutely mind fucked. Evil Within. Oh wow. That you know that that's funny though. Like that as an outsider, like that totally tracks to me. As someone Evil who didn't within. actually play the game. Got a has a 68% on Metacritic. Absolutely blew my fucking mind. A uh, one that didn't blow my mind, Star Fox Zero with the 69% yeah. on Metacritic. Yeah. So that one made Some people say there's never been a good Star Fox game. Here's one that actively made me angry. Yeah. Avalanche's Mad Max as a 69 on Metacritic. It's funny. I yeah, I what I then did, I and maybe we'll get to it. I was like, when I think of a seven, what do I think of? And Mad Max mm. was one of the first things I thought of. Blue, I loved great that game. game. That game to me is much, much higher than a 69. Um, another one, Friday the 13th, the sure. video game, which I get it launched with some bugs, and but for the most part, is you know, whatever 60% on Medicare. Wow, all the way down to 60. And then coming up with, with something that uh, absolutely shell shocked to me with a 64 on Metacritic, Wild Arms XF, which I consider to be like one of the weirdest, most fun, like top down, like strategy RPGs from the Super Nintendo days. Huh. Absolutely weird as hell. Got it. So a 64. What well, I think I kind of take a step back and I'm like, look, there are games when I see a solid seven come out, I'm not actually like disappointed by that. Yeah. Like I'm actually a lot of times it elates me that like, oh shit. Because I think the other thing too is that a lot of times sevens aren't safe bets. That's true. It, it, it's certainly there's a lot of mileage that may vary with a yeah. seven. And so I kind of love the idea that we have, and I've always championed, and it's such a bummer because I think Embracer Group just bit off way more than it than it could chew. Sure. When they started just buying out all these studios. We've seen it with the recent uh, pivot where they've sold off. Uh, they sold off Gearbox to 2K, which I thought was a great pickup for 2K, and that, that made sense logically. Um, but, like, I love the idea that we get, like, B games, double A games. A lot of times, double A games are, I think, what falls into that seven category. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I like, we need more of those games. Like, I would rather have a like a shit ton of sevens to choose from than like three nines to deal with. You know, I feel like there's this this interesting thing, and I don't have data to back this up. This is purely anecdotal, but I feel like I'm correct, and I'm interested to hear. What you, you probably think. are. Yeah, it feels to me. Like there is this correlation between one of two things with a high grade budget. Yes. In that so often if a game doesn't look incredible, run incredible, it's the, you know, the prettiest game I've ever seen. Those kinds of things. If it doesn't have that, it cannot reach the status of a 10. Or I feel like the only other times that we see tens is on the like capital I indie space of like yeah. your Celeste's, your Hollow Knights of like, mm -hmm. it might be a marvel to look at, but it's because of a simple art style. It's because of just the way that it's animated, but it's certainly a low budget game. I feel like if you were to go back and if you were to look at the list of all of the highest rated games on Metacritic, or if you were to pull a list of all of the tens that IGN has ever given or GameSpot has ever given, I would be shocked if there was if there are any like double A feeling games on that list. Uh and what we mean by double A is is games like Dead Island 2, where like they have like a decent budget. Yeah. They're they're trying to be a triple A game in a lot of a lot of ways, but they just don't have the budget to do it. So they're doing the best they can. And a lot of the times they'll still make a great product, but it just like can never get to that point of like it being universally loved as like one of the best games ever. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with budget and like graphical fidelity. And I feel like that is something that I would like to see 
the general conversation adjust to and not be so locked into, well, if if a game doesn't look as good as as fucking Ghost of Tsushima, which so many people say is one of the top 15 greatest games of all time, then so there's no way so that it can be a 10 out of 10. Uh, Jordan in the chat, Hellblade looked as good, if not better, than a lot of AAA games at the time, despite being double A. And that's an interesting, that might be one that kind of fits into uh, not quite into my bubble. Granted, I don't know what that Metacritic is, but that one might be like a, well, because it might be the, like lack of combat that kept that from from achieving high rankings perhaps um but yeah i don't know i find it all very fascinating so um, go ahead. i do yeah i think it's i think that's a really interesting point but i also think the other thing too is typically talent flocks to budget true or budget can buy talent that's true and i think a lot of the indie space i think that like what defines a double a game isn't necessarily that there's not like talent behind it or whatnot it's that a double A game is like we're bigger than an indie studio. We're bigger than indie. But we're not quite to the point where we can put out the same polish or design as a massive game. So we're going to kind of ride that middle budget where it's like they kind of overreach. A double A game to me and a seven a lot of times is that they, they're trying to overreach what they're capable of. Sure. That's and I love I fucking love that. I absolutely love the idea of like a scrappy group that's like, fuck it. We're going to shoot for the stars. Not all of it's going to land. Yeah. But we're not going to, we're not going to put out what's eaten, you know, what's eaten Gilbert Grape. I was going to, what is <laughs> like, uh, what's left of Edith or what remains of Edith Finch. We're not going to do that because we're going to do something bigger. Yeah. What we yeah. sure as shit aren't going to put out fucking, you know, we're not going to be able to put out, you know, Marvel Spider-Man two. But we can put out Dead Island too, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a we're gonna do some weird shit over here. Fucking destroy all humans. One of my favorite franchises. Such a weird, quirky little franchise. An absolute double A game. Yeah, yeah. But like, it was just like we're fuck it. Like that's I think a double A has the attitude a lot of times is you can say fuck it, and I that's true. Absolutely love that about it. And sometimes the fuck it attitude makes a stinker, but sometimes it doesn't. It uh, makes a seven. A fuck yeah. it attitude makes a seven. And yeah, I am yeah. right there with it. Um, but you know, I think I think you're you're spot on, and whoever that was on Twitter is spot on that there is a uh, a perception that we have, and I think it probably has to do with school of of us anything less than a seven is failing. Cognitive clips in the chat makes the point that you know in college. Uh, a 60 is considered passing. I don't think the average American considers a 60. <laughs> what liberal art school did you go to, <laughs> brother? But, but like, I think if you, for just about everybody, like on average, people would say below 70 is failing. And I think that that carries over to a grading scale for, for critiquing art as well. I think people just don't consider anything lower than a seven to be good. And then you have the assholes that think even a seven isn't good. Um, but like, look, look at this real quick. Let me pull in. Uh, it's not a very long list. IGN has an article of every 10 out of 10 that they've ever given. Mm -hmm. Elden Ring, Forza Horizon 5, Deathloop, Disco Elysium, Spelunky, Crusader Kings 3. What the fuck is that? Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, Last of Us Part 2, Overwatch, Persona 5 Royal, Half-Life Alex, Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War 2018, Celeste, Mario Odyssey, Undertale, Breath of the Wild, Inside the Witness, Metal Gear Solid 5, Grand Theft Auto 5, The Last of Us 1, Skyward Sword, Uncharted 3, Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare, Mario Galaxy 2, GTA 4, Metal Gear Solid 4, so many of like the same franchise, Pokemon Red and Blue, and Ocarina of Time. There isn't a single either high fucking budget game mm -hmm. or indie fucking indie in that list. I Maybe Crusader Kings, because I actually have no idea what that game is. It's a it's like a tactical, like a tactical strategy game. If okay, I'm maybe like that. see fucking Excel nerd. Maybe that's like a double A type game, but, but like in its I own don't, sphere. I don't know. Yeah, but like it's, it's know, just man. so interesting that all of them are completely one way or the other. Yeah, and and I, no, and I think that that's it. That's a really good point. I think. A seven out of ten and a double A game kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Because it is. It's like it could be that they don't have the same, you know, developmental talent 
that a big studio that can put out, you know, the, like Naughty Dog or Insomniac or, you know, one of the large Nintendo uh, dev teams, like maybe it doesn't, but at the same time too, like I think an indie game is one of those, like you'll see like all those indie games, like the witness showing up and Celeste and all that stuff, Undertale where it's like, yeah, like to me, that makes sense that you would have like these really small titles because those really small titles, are going to feel so much more niche and so much more one th- like this, right? Yeah. Whereas that like a seven and a double A game is one of those where like we're trying to appeal to a very wide audience. We're going to fuck it up most things when we do it. And I don't know. I feel like I feel like as much as I would love to say it. Starfield has no personality. Sure. The Last of Us. I love I love that game. But, like, at a certain point, like, I mean, I know what I'm getting, and I love that game. It's a 10 out of 10, but the personality's not there for me. And The Last of Us. Okay, hear me out. That's shocking. I hear me out. But because, like, it's not a video game to me at that point. A seven sure. is a video game ass video game, man. Like sure. a drag, like Yakuza, like a dragon, seven out of 10. That's a video game ass video game. Destroy all humans. That's a video game ass video game. Like, you tell me, you pull up one fucking seven, and you tell me that that is not a video game ass video game, I or mean, double A game. That is not a video game ass video game. That's true. I, the only one that I that I pulled from IGN that jumps out to me as not really being a video game ass video game is a Plague Tale Innocence, but even that still has some video game ass video game elements to it. That is, I think that's that that definitely feels kind of like an outlier. It feels like a weird but, one, but yeah, I think it's an outlier. Like when I look at the rest of the list. Yeah, it's but it's, that's like a yeah. that's a straight up double A ass game though. That's true. That's and true. if you if you play it, like there are moments where you're like, yeah, dude, this is a double A double A game. I really enjoyed Plague Tale in a sense. Yeah, yeah. So like, I kind of you know, I kind of love this idea where it's like, it's like, I hate this fucking stupid to say, but like, when that A twenty four horror film drops once a year, and you're like, hell yeah, I'm gonna get to watch Midsummer. I'm going to get to watch Hereditary or Bodies, Bodies, Bodies or Talk to Me, right? You get to look forward to that event, right? Yeah, yeah. But you're fucking telling me that, like, you wouldn't fucking watch, like, Car Wash, Car Wash Bikini Bloodbath? <laughs> sure. You wouldn't watch some, like, those are the ones that get you amped and ready for that shit to when A24 drops that next Art House shit. Like, these stink these fucking clunkers these seven out of tens these just weird fucking gory horror films with a shit budget and because it's got a shit budget it can do something weird telling me yeah like that 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 breeds ground for for everything else to succeed i'll tell you this i love it judging off ign scale the best seven out of ten to ever come out ever bullet storm the nintendo switch I'm sorry. They gave this. This was at launch. I'm sure they probably re-reviewed it at some point. But at launch, they gave the Switch a seven. Dude's like the best console that's ever been made. <laughs> you know what? Nothing matters anymore, Patrick. Yeah, we yeah. didn't learn anything over the last couple weeks. Nothing fucking matters. Yeah. Especially video game review scores. Yeah. What do you think uh, at home? What What are some some sevens to you, whether literally or not? Like for me, in my I, I put together a list. Like in my mind, I'm gonna get flack for this. I feel like Red Dead Redemption Two is a seven out of ten, but it's great. Like there's a lot that that game leaves to be desired, but it's fucking great. That's now that doesn't budget. quite align with the like big budget double A thing but like if I'm just grading a game but more like Borderlands 1 I think is like peak 7 out of 10 of like Hell yeah, it they is. came out they had fucking flair and they knocked it out of the park and there's a lot better video games than Borderlands 1 but it's a fucking fun game Borderlands 2 yeah that's true but yeah what 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 are some sevens in your mind let us know mail spotlight games on net or join the discord let's talk about it in the general channel of the discord i will always talk about seven out of ten let's fucking do it baby uh thanks for listening thanks for watching we're gonna be back next week with even more fun conversations to talk about because this is a weekly show over here on twitch.tv slash spotlight games but Cayman, if they're listening and they haven't subscribed yet on youtube or twitch but they want to follow you specifically, Cayman. Where can they find you at home? You can find me at the Dumpster Boy on Twitter, where I am most likely liking tweets about games that are seven out of ten. 
Ooh, that's true. Ain't that the truth? Uh, you can follow me at Patrick Schwag. You can follow the pod at Spot Games Pod, both on Twitter or everywhere else at Spotlight Games Pod. That's YouTube. That's Twitch. That's TikTok. That's Instagram. Uh, I had a great time. I hope you did too. Uh, if you haven't already, like I said, go subscribe to us on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, in the heat of the moment, we missed that friend of the show, Cole House Jr., gave out a community sub. Terry, if you're still here, thanks for the sub. We appreciate it. And shout out again to Cognitive Clips for resubscribing earlier. We'll be back tomorrow night with some Last of Us Part 2, uh, a game with no style, apparently. You uh, know what? No personality. I didn't say style. That's true. That's true. No personality. I mean, maybe, I, you know, you're right. I misquoted you. Maybe it's got personality and maybe it does like style. I don't know. You be the judge. You be the judge. Tomorrow night, Twitch.tv, Shots by the Game Spot. Until then, boom!